Hello and welcome to the second section of the data analysis with Spark course. In this section we will see how to load the data into Spark and how to run some basic operations on this data. This section will be composed of two parts. First part is a theoretical part in which we will be looking at the abstractions that Spark has to provide for working with the data. These are concepts like RDD, data frame and other concepts that are related to these two concepts. Second part will be a more practical hands-on part where we will see how to load the data that we have downloaded in the previous section into a data frame and also we will see uh, how to run some basic operations on this data frame. So let us start with uh, some theoretical discussion about which abstractions Spark has to offer for you to work with data. In this video, we will cover some theory on the Spark data model. Precisely, we will cover resilient distributed dataset and Spark SQL API, as well as the differences between the two. Let us start with the concept of resilient distributed datasets or RDDs. The documentation itself describes an RDD as a fault-tolerant collection of elements that can be operated on in parallel. So the main motivation for RDD is the need to work with the large distributed databases where you do not have any kind of consistency guarantees and also you may need to work on this kind of databases in parallel. So this gave rise to the concept of an RDD that precisely is a collection that supports this kind of operations. And the kinds of operations that are available on this collection uh, are divided into two groups. First of all, these are transformations. Uh, these transformations are the operations that transform one RDD into another RDD. And these kind of operations might be familiar to you from ordinary Scala collection operations. These are operations like flat map, filter, etc. And um, the actions are operations that are used to compute some kind of concrete value from the RDD. These are the reduce operation, that is a pairwise reduction of a data set, a reduction by a pairwise composition of its elements. Uh, also it is count that counts uh, all the elements inside the RDD for each that uh, is basically a for loop on an RDD and many other actions. Now the transformations on an RDD are mostly lazy. This means that they run only on demand once the result of the transformation is actually needed. And the actions are concrete operations that uh, you might uh, want to use to compute a value on your dataset. An important point to know about RDD is a map reduce paradigm that is used to compute a value on a distributed collection. So a map reduce paradigm involves sequential usage of first the map transformation and then the reduce action on the mapped uh, uh, RDD. But for the purposes of uh, data analysis, uh, RDD is not as interesting to us as the next uh, class which is data frame type uh, and therefore we will not be covering RDD in details for the time being. This brings us to the SQL API that um, Spark has to offer for the programmers and this API includes two main types that we are interested in, the data set type and the data frame type. So the motivation for an SQL-like API for Spark is the need for the flexibility of the SQL syntax when working with data. It is uh, in certain cases, it is more convenient to treat your collections as an SQL dataset with all the flexibility that comes with the SQL language that you can run over this data. So uh, this way, SQL API for Spark provides an SQL-like API for working with data. The core functionality of this API is provided by the dataset class, which represents a collection on which you can run this kind of SQL-like operations. And data frame type is uh, defined as simply an alias for a dataset of rows. 
where row is another class from SQL API and it intuitively represents your objects as uh, named uh, values. And um, the also uh, data frame and uh, data set have, uh, an, uh, have SQL style query language, SQL style API. And so for example, you can expect them to have methods like select, which selects a colon from a data set also, this kind of classes have an API that uh, usually that also dataset has an API for that is similar to the API that comes with usual Scala collections. So, for example, you might have a filter method, but uh, it is worth noting that you are filtering by colon and not by uh, some kind of concrete value. So, hence you might want to use the colon selectors when filtering. Uh, when filtering the data set. Also, it is very important to know where to find this and other operations that uh, the discussed classes provide. So, both RDD and both data set provide a very large amount of operations that might be useful in different occasions, and therefore it is important to know where to find operations and the documentation about them. And during working with these APIs, Carl advised to use the official Scala API documentation, which is available from the official website. So let us have a look at it. So from the official documentation website, you might want to navigate to API Docs, then click Scala. And this will bring you to an official Scala doc that provides you with uh, the documentation for the classes that we have just discussed and also all the other APIs that Spark provides. So, for example, to find the API of data frame or data set that we have just discussed, you might want to type data set and this will provide you with the description of all the methods that are available to you as a programmer. For programming with dataset. 